Big thanks go out to Tywa for supporting today's video via Patreon. Agatha versus Perforos this time, so who can go off faster? Yeah, I mean, we can hope that Halana and Elena can get a bunch of plus counters onto our commander and maybe burn our opponent to death. Pretty risky keep because we don't have any enablers, but we'll try it. Our opponent's starting off with a Valor Cut. We will uh, go in for a tap land ourselves. We drew in two Ring of Valkus, a means of haste and putting plus counters on stuff. As long as they're red, that is. And then it's into a Mind Stone, ready for what's likely a Perforos next turn, I would think. Okay, a Lightning Greaves means we can go Reflecting Pool now into Nature's Law, into our Commander and Lightning Greaves. Should be alright. So we'll get another tap land down here. So yep, yeah, we see a turn 3 Perforos from our opponent. We're going to have to be careful with the Shroud from Lightning Greaves because of this being a target ability. But we will go for a Forest into our Commander and then play and equip the Lightning Greaves. Might as well hit our opponent for one as well. So we see Mog War Marshal coming down into the Perforos, going to shock us twice with that. And then there's a Diviner's Wand, so... For 6 mana we can play and equip it, and then hopefully it'll just be 1 mana draw a card from this. So a bit of setting up to do with that, but something to do in the later game, if there is going to be a later game. So we'll play Halana now, and we'll hope that our opponent doesn't have any kind of burn in hand, because we'll go Lightning Greaves onto the new legend. Plus counters onto our commander to make the activated abilities cost less. So already this is just going to cost 1 mana to draw cards. And then I suppose we might as well swing in with both creatures here. Our opponent obviously doesn't block. Argument to be made for us holding back so that they can't hit us, but I think we should be fine with the extra two points of damage being taken. Might be that they get into a Lord effect, an Anthem effect for the goblins, but I wouldn't have thought so. Anyway, another goblin comes into play on the Echo cost. So that obviously shocks us. A Cryptic Caves for our opponent. And into a Paramancer's Goggles, so... Yeah, looks like they do have burn in the deck, actually. Could be a lightning bolt there. Uh, not hitting us with the goblin token, so... Might mean that he wants to slow down a bit. Which could suggest that we're free to swing in ourselves. So we'll go lightning greaves onto the other legend again. Drop a land. And why don't we set up with this diviner's wand? Won't be able to draw anything this turn, but... We'll be able to draw a hell of a lot next turn. And we'll go through to combat again. So once again, this is going to put plus counters on there. And I think we're fine to swing in here. Got our opponent on 9 points of commander damage. And Lightning Greaves goes back over there. I think we've escaped the burn at this point directly on our creatures. But yeah, Halana's done the work already anyway. I think 4 plus counters, maybe 5 or 6 is about as much as we ever need really. Like I said, first time playing the deck. So yeah, I can't remember. I think there's some 8 mana abilities that we can put into which obviously will be reduced by our commander so taking a hit from the goblin tokens for the first time uh, that is three cards our opponent is holding up and there is a Gaia Sage which I'm more than happy to put counters on to Agatha gets plus one plus one and flying because we have just drawn a card during our draw step that is from the wand here so obviously we can get buffs there as well now our opponent doing something during the draw phase here Gonna copy it with the Paramancer's Goggles. That is a Commune with Lava, so exile X cards off the top of the library and you can play them until your next turn, so... Yeah, they're gonna have access to a lot of stuff now. So let's see what they've got. They have Mountains, a Simeon Spirit Guide. You have to exile it from your hand, so they shouldn't be able to... I mean, it's in the Exile Zone already, so that should be useless. Unless they want to just play it as a 2-2. Professional Facebreaker, obviously a good one. Paretic Ritual... They might as well play. And Krenko's Command is going to deal two to us twice. So nothing too scary, but you know, we can't drag our feet against Krenko. So we'll draw a card for one mana off the Diviner's Wand. There's a Sky Shroud claim. Draw another. Okay, City of Brass is an untapped land at least. Draw again into Selvala, Ice Shaper. Um, so we could make a mana with that for just one mana, or for two mana, we could get some decent card advantage, that's probably something to do next turn though. So why don't we just go for the Gaia Sage, we can dump some plus counters onto it, and then it'll tap for a decent sum of mana. So that gets the plus counters, and haste, so we could draw a bunch now, and then we'll draw some more. That is a Rishkar, 
a silk guard and a windswept teeth and our commander currently a 12-12 flyer so even if our opponent hadn't attacked in last turn we would have had them here anyway so yeah that turns out to be pretty convincing I wasn't too sure about the diviner's wand at first but yeah, if you can manage to sink the six mana into it to start off with and then survive a turn then yeah apparently it can do some work we'll play another one all right up against a Traxxer this time so we'll see how obnoxious an Atraxa list it is. Um, well, we've got the Lightning Greaves to protect our commander again. No other creature to get the Shroud off it, though. We will try. I wonder if Lightning Greaves is going to hurt us more often than not. Draw into Svela again. And we get into another land in Reflecting Pool, so... Uh, yeah, do we just set up here, go for the Lightning Greaves? Our opponent playing out a Decanter of Endless Water... Uh, that is some Hexproof and a buff for our commander, so that's a good draw. If I'd known we were going to draw that, I would have played the commander and not the Greaves. Um, play the Rootbound Crag and... Yeah, let's ramp with the Heraldic Banner, I think. Because hopefully we'll make a land next turn. We can go Tribute to the World Tree into our commander. Get another buff on there. And we'll just name Green. I can't remember if there's more green or red creatures in the deck, so... You know, I'll have to look that up, but... Really in here to buff our commander. Alright, well, there's an Elko, Thief of Crowns, so I'm going to assume that this is a really spiky deck our opponent's made. Alright, a Commander's Plate will buff our Commander as well, so... Yeah, this will allow us to remove the Lightning Greaves, so... Hmm... Yeah, we should have enough buffs from the Commander's Plate and the Guardian Augmenter, so... Let's forego the Tribute to the World Tree, I think. Or we could continue to ramp, just go for the Ronus's Monument. And then it would be... These two costing two mana. So whether we get a land or not, we can go for Agatha into one of these next turn. Yeah, let's go for Ronus's Monument. We'll be able to obviously give our commander a decent buff as well, so we might be able to one-shot the Oko. Might as well get down the commander's plate as well to save us some mana. Alright, our opponent managing to get into enough mana to make a Traxxer Grand Unifier. And with that we see a bunch of lands, Nature's Law... Is a sorcery, but probably takes the demonic tutor far seek as well. Dawn Treader Elk, so it's pretty much Dawn Treader Elk, a land and demonic tutor there. And our opponent turned the food token into an elk here, so yeah, let's see. I think we're going to have to aim for a combo win. <laughs> All right, there's a captivating crew, is an interesting one. So we'll go for Agatha first of all. And then we'll go for the Guardian Augmenter now, just so that our opponent's less likely to counter it. So that's plus two, plus two onto the Agatha. And then a further plus two, plus two from the Augmenter. And more importantly, it has Hexproof. So Lightning Greaves can go onto the Augmenter to protect that. And when we cast the Captivating Crew next turn, hopefully we'll have another mana held up. And that means that we'll be able to steal away the Atraxer and deal with the Oko maybe. Elko makes a food token, so goes up to 9 loyalty. And then we're going to get hit in the air for 7 points of commander damage. Oh, really? And then it's Emergent Ultimatum from our opponent, so... Yeah, okay. Probably just goes for a bunch of extra turns and stuff here, so that you can get us in the air with combat damage on the Atraxa. But yeah, missing lands there, I don't feel too bad about losing this one. If we'd had more mana, we could have likely set up the Captivating Crew. Although I'm not sure that necessarily would have helped us... Uh, let's see here, it's Bolas's Citadel, a Liliana Dreadhorde General, and an Omniscience. So, yeah, we pretty much have to give them, or put the uh, Liliana back into the library here, so that they can not make us sacrifice the creatures. So now they get Omniscience and Bolas's Citadel, four cards in hand to cast. Two of which, we know what they are. So our opponent has the game here, you would think. Demonic Tutor. And casting a Saw Ring for free mana doesn't really matter at this point. A uh, Garrick Wildspeaker and a Delvin Hand of Control. And then that was a Blur. So they're basically just flickering their Atraxa. And showing us with that a bunch of lands again. Then it's Whirlwind of Denial. And the Nature's Law. And we see a Swords to Plowshares as well. So casting the Nature's Law straight away. And then casting and sacrificing the Dawn Treader Elk. Then casting Open the Way. Not sure how many they put into X on that. But anyway, allowing us to have another turn. So pretty much just counter everything we do here. And just in the nick of time we get a Bars Invoker. Unfortunately, 
Not going to be able to do anything with it here. But we'll play it out anyway, just for the crack. So the Ronus' Monument, plus two, plus two, onto the Commander. And there is the Whirlwind of Denial. Now Bajukabog going to exile our graveyard, which could be relevant because we do have Agatha's Cauldron in this deck. But our opponent just gets us on Commander damage, I imagine. Eternal Witness off the top will return something. And went after the Demonic Tutor. Shigeki, Jukai Visionary, hits us with the Atraxor again. Oko turning Ronus' Monument into an Elk. Then Flicker of Fate, flickering the Atraxor again. And this time we see Lignify and Oubliette in the same hand. Leadership Vacuum and a Growth Spiral. Plays out Vents of the Sojourner. And our opponent ticks that up straight away. Alright, so Atraxor comes back in again. And, uh, well, gets a bunch of stuff basically. Uh, there is a Silk Guard, which is of no relevance to us really. So let's just try the Captivating Crew for the fun of it, but our opponent should ultimately just swing in at us next turn. And still by turn 7, haven't managed to get into a 4th land unfortunately, so... Wouldn't help us anyway, because the uh, Captivating Crew can only do this at sorcery speed. Um, yeah, so like I said, we can't like steal the Atraxa before we get hit by it in combat, so... At least our opponent is taking us out quickly this turn. Don't think there's much shame in losing to one of the most powerful commanders in the format. We'll try another one. Agatha versus Nivmizit Perun this time, so don't think this will be any easier. We will keep this one thanks to the Wheel of Fortune in hand. Alright, now drawing to a stomping ground, so get the Nature's Law going. And that way we'll be able to go for our commander into Roaring Earth and drop a land over the next few turns. And if we're fast enough, we might be able to ruin our opponent's day by going for Wheel of Fortune and getting rid of his decent hand that we assume he kept. Our opponent goes for Mana Crypt on turn 2, which will not help him into his commander at least. The Relic of Legends will though. And then in two more fast mana in Grim Monolith. A Defiler of Vigor now. And this is on green permanence, which is relevant, so... Yeah, unfortunately can't cast it here, so... Go for the Mountain into the Agatha. Uh, might as well go for the enchantment as well. A Phyrexian Metamorph coming down as a copy of the Grim Monolith. So making plenty of mana, but none of it helping him get his commander down. Could be holding up a Cyclonic Rift, I suppose. There's a Heraldic Banner. So do we just go for the Defiler of Vigor here? Don't have any more green permanents to cast into it. So maybe I'd just rather have the Heraldic Banner. Yeah, let's shock in the Stomping Ground. Plus counter onto our only creature. Then play the banner naming green. And that will give a plus one buff to power. And then we'll go through to attacks and deal some commander damage to our opponent. And the thing I never want to do is play Wheel of Fortune into a bunch of mana on our opponent's side of the field. Especially when they're going to go up cards. But I have a feeling that we're going to get battered this game anyway. <laughs> okay, they have a force of will. Yeah, I do want to point out that I said in the lobby that I'm just playtesting here. And uh, we faced up against a powerful niv deck. It looks like it's a powerful niv deck. And a Traxxer so far. So these are the things to expect on Magic Online. If you ever want to give it a whirl. A Kozilek, the Great Distortion, will refill our opponent's hand. Then getting down a tap land in Valakut Stoneforge. And now Rapid Hybridization. Okay, and there's an Ancient Tomb. So Roaring Girth will trigger on the Frog Lizard token. We'll go for the Defiler of Vigor now, which is allowed down, so now we can go for a 3 mana Agatha, and it will cost us 2 life to do that. And that will put a plus counter on all of our creatures on the stack, so if we can get into more green creatures, then we'll be able to put plus counters on Agatha. Not sure Defiler of Vigor is going to be good enough. Our opponent discards the Abrade to counter the Agatha. Manifold Key to untap the rocks. And Seething Song makes a bunch of red mana. So this will allow him into the niv mizzet most likely. And there it is, three cards in hand. Followed by a Goblin Matron for a tutor. Goes for the Dockside Extortionist with that. So, no one of the cards that's in his hand at least. And meanwhile we can't stop drawing into lands, so... Go for our commander again. But once again, our opponent is going to counter the Agatha, so didn't want to bother casting the Dockside, just used it as a counter there. So we'll play the Forest. And put the counter on the Defiler of Vigor. Not sure why our opponent didn't swing in with the Kozilek previously. He's obviously just worried about our commander coming in. So our opponent draws a card during the draw step. That will ping us with the dragon. 
And now getting down Malcolm Keen-Eyed Navigator. And there we see a Rhystic Study down to one card in hand. We'll do our best to pay into that. Attempt to slow our opponent down a bit. Alright, there's a Bal's Invoker. So can we get our Commander's power high enough? Pay into the Rhystic Study, like we said. And then we'll go for that Verdant Catacombs so that we can put a couple of plus counters onto the Agatha. Our opponent's got something else, apparently. You don't have the Pongify, surely. <laughs> okay, he's got a Gut Shot. So... Yeah, that means that we can go for cracking this to put a plus counter on it. Unfortunately, they're going to be able to shock it in response. Um, so we let them draw first and hope that they don't target the same commander, the same creature. Yeah, so going for that twice. So that means even if we crack the Venet Catacombs, it's going to die here. So we'll just have to allow it. And our opponent's still with a card in hand, thanks to the... Uh, Cantrip on the Niv-Mizzet Perun. Untapping Grim Monolith with the Manifold Key on the way out. Drawing a card will ping us. A Seagate Restoration is going to draw our opponent a card. So he goes up to two. And then he'll draw three from this. And there'll be some damage when our opponent does that. From the Niv-Mizzet Perun. Playing a Bloodstained Mire. Untapping the Grim Monolith. And now swinging in for a treasure on the Malcolm. Alright, that is a Rockfall Veil. So, I don't even know how much our commander costs now. That's going to cost us 9, which means we tap out. They're going to be able to do something during our turn anyway, aren't they? So I'll just play the Rockfall Veil so that I can paint to the Rhystic Study anyway, and that means that we'll be able to start swinging in with the Defiler of Vigor. If they want to block with the Kozilek, then so be it. Our opponent now cracking a Bloodstained Mire because he probably has a Snap or something perfect like that. Nope, it's a Resculpt. So they will get to draw a card and ping us again. And down goes the Defiler of Vigor. So I'll just have to go for tapping out into the Agatha now. And praying our opponent doesn't have interaction, which is very unlikely. Have to allow our opponent to draw a card to the study because we want to crack Verdant Catacombs to buff our commander. So we'll just do that now. But all our opponent ultimately has to do here is draw at least a couple of cards and the Agatha is going to go down again. So if that happens, I'm just going to give it up because it's... Uh, an uphill battle that we're fighting here. So it's one damage onto us this time, not going after the Agatha. A Mox Opal. And then swinging in with the Kozilek and the Niv Mizzet. We have to take the damage from the Niv Mizzet, but we can chump the Kozilek. I say chump, actually, we trade here, don't we? It's 12 power on 12 toughness. And we do have to double block because this thing has menace. So successfully getting rid of the Kozilek, we go down to 13. And then it's a Simeon Spirit Guide. And our opponent passing to us with three cards in hand. We just draw yet another land. So play that. It is a plus counter onto our commander. So unfortunately we haven't buffed our commander anywhere close to enough for this to be relevant. But we can just play it out here and watch our opponent counter it. And we'll pay into Rhystic Study because it's going to be four mana twice into the Bars Invoker. Our opponent not countering it, so maybe by some miracle we'll be able to actually do something this game, but I uh, highly doubt it. Untapping the Grim Monolith, not doing anything at the end of our turn, so might just have lands in hand. Obviously, if the Agatha's power was high enough, we'd be able to pay just one to activate the Bal's Invoker and deal four damage to our opponent per mana we have. But, uh, yeah, hasn't happened for us, unfortunately. If Mizzet Perun pointed at us, and then going straight through to combat here, so it's going to switch off our pain lands eventually. Going in at us for 7, which knocks us down to 5. We can still tap our lands. Maybe by some miracle we can buff up the Agatha high enough to make it more relevant with the Bal's Invoker. Probably just going to draw into a land though, let's face it. Okay, there's Leafkin Avenger. So yeah, again, we're getting into the enablers now. We just haven't been able to keep Agatha in enough. I can't think of how many times we've recast it, so... Yeah, that's probably us done. So as we can see here, the Bal's Invoker costs 4, and it will be 4 damage to our opponent. We can only do it 3 times here. So we'll just concede it there. Our opponent gets us on the attack next turn, and we'll try yet again to get a game in which we're not being controlled to death. Okay, we'll try our luck up against Urtet this time. <laughs> and speaking of luck, not having the best of it this video, we will mulligan a one-lander. Into a two lander with a far seek and 
a payoff card in the Flame Wave Invoker, so yeah, we'll try this one. Blasphemous Act, probably not a good idea to get rid of against a uh, mere tribal player, but we'll do it here and try and outrace them. Okay, a Ronus' Monument will be good to get down reasonably soon, I think. Yeah, I don't think the Magus is going to be all that much use to us, but if we're just deciding to curve out here, then yeah, maybe we do get it down on turn one and challenge our opponent to get rid of it. Obviously, when this costs less mana, it will be one mana to untap a bunch of lands. And our opponent does have a Sol Ring, so shocking down the Sacred Foundry. And then the remaining three mana gets him some more ramp in the form of Palladium Mir. We get a Reflecting Pool, can just play that into the Far Seek, I think. Our opponent plays a Plaza of Heroes. And then we see Urtet, Remnant of Memnarch. Obviously missing two of the five colours for Wooburg so far. But there is a Copper Mir. And he's going to make the first token from the Commander. And then it is a Defence Grid. We're not a Control Deck, so not too worried about Defence Grid. Don't think we'll be doing anything on our opponent's turn. Well, our opponent just vomiting his hand into play. That is a Crashing Drawbridge, so might be able to do some stuff with the Commander and five colours next turn. Alright, and we get into a Sky Shroud Claim, so... I was looking to go for the Ronas' Monument here, but instead we can go for Sky Shroud Claim into our Commander, I think. Still don't have a means of buffing up our Agatha, unfortunately. Just one card remaining in our opponent's hand, and going for a mere Sire. And then totally empty-handed, we see Horn of the Mark. Whenever two or more creatures you control attack, look at the top five cards of your library, reveal a creature from among them, put it into your hand, and the rest on the bottom at random. So, giving everything haste with the drawbridge. Thankfully not able to buff everything here. And that is just so that our opponent can get a Horn of the Mark trigger. And revealing to us an Arkham Dagson with that. So I think we're fine to take our two toughness and throw it in the way of a mirror before it gets a bunch of plus counters on it. And now seeing the Arkham Dagson from our opponent, as you would expect. <laughs> Alright, there is the Blasphemous Act, so argument to be made for us going for that, because we're not doing too much of anything else, unfortunately. So we probably just have to forego the potential infinite mana from Magus of the Candelabra, and do a one mana board wipe here before the Arkham Dagson does any damage. So yeah, we'll do that. And that will leave a Mir in play from the Mir Sire. Our commander's going to cost four, but we can have it cost one less with Ronus's Monument. So replaying the Agatha after the board wipe and pass over to our opponent. Hopefully we've bought ourselves enough time to make the Agatha's ability relevant and start getting some burn off with this. At the moment we can do it five times a turn once we get enough power onto our commander. Out comes the Urtet again. Still missing colours, our opponent. And deciding not to sacrifice the mere token. That is a forced adaptation, so we can slowly, very slowly, start doing something here. The deck during playtesting could be a hell of a lot faster than this, but we haven't had the best of luck here, unfortunately. Now a Mystic Forge from our opponent, so should be able to play things off the top quite consistently. And now deciding to swing in to get some card advantage from the Horn of the Mark. But totally whiffs on that, so not throwing anything into the reveal zone. Force Adaptation, putting its first plus counter on the Agatha. We do have means of double plus counters and stuff like that in this deck, but yeah, clearly we are not going to draw into any of it. There is a Steelbane Hydra, which will currently only cost a green to blow things up, so probably a good idea. We'll of course buff our commander as well. I'll put one into X and then it gets one from here as well, so it'll come in with two plus counters. So then we'll be able to blow up... Eh... If we're not going to do anything else this turn, we might as well blow up multiple things, actually. Uh, if we go 1, 2, 3, 4 into X. Ronus' Monument, unfortunately, not as relevant as I was hoping it was going to be. I thought we'd be able to play this this turn and then do some 5 points of damage to our opponent, but we might as well make use of the Steelbane Hydra here. So now it's a single green in order to go for the Stoneforge Mystic. Obviously, the activated ability costs 4 less. But we do have to pay the green, it will always cost at least one generic mana. And it's between the Sol Ring and the Horn of the Mark, really. Let's go after their Sol Ring. And then we might as well swing through for some commander damage. We've seen in previous games that that can be relevant. So our commander will be a 3-3 next turn. And if we play this, it'll be a 5-5. So if we can buff it again somehow, then we're getting closer and closer to the Invoker being relevant. Urtet managing to make a land. Brings it in tap though. And our opponent willing to throw away the Urtet here. Might be able to buff the Mere token. He's literally just looking for some card advantage from the mark as usual. This time not whiffing. We see Joyra. So 
Yeah, might have wished that he'd waited on the land drop there. We'll get rid of the token. So there we go again, a plus counter for the Agatha. And we see a land, so it's a mountain at least for the Flame Wave Invoker. Let's just get this thing down finally. Plus two, plus two onto the Agatha. So that is now a 5-5, five, five, and like we said, this will its ability will cost three mana. Obviously we'd rather it cost just a single red, but we'll activate it here, point it at our opponent, and spend the three mana to deal five damage. Knocking our opponent down to 29, and this is a lot more clunky than the deck is supposed to go. But we'll keep playing it out here. Five more commander damage puts our opponent at nine. And we'll see what our opponent does here, but it might be worth blowing up the mark finally, so that they can stop getting this card advantage if they're willing to throw the Urtet into two twos and potentially trade. We'll take the card advantage away. Again, playing lands intact. So there is the Joyra. We'll get rid of the Horn. That means that we've only got one more thing we can blow up with the Steelbane Hydra. But Joyra could turn this game around for our opponent. Not really much point in turning Urtet in sideways now. One card left in our opponent's hand. Okay, that is a Rising of the Day. It further buffs our commander at least. So now our commander is a 5-4, and we're at the same spot that we were at previously. Flame Wave Invoker might as well deal some damage to our opponent, but you can imagine if that ability only costs 1, how much damage we'd be dealing here. Every mountain would effectively tap 4-5 damage on our opponent. Not going to risk the trade against our opponent, otherwise we'd swing in for 5 points of commander damage here. <laughs> the Immortal Sun, our opponent could get back into this one, that will draw a card every turn. And Joyra drew them a card there as well. But as the turns progress, our Agatha's getting bigger and bigger, and this is getting cheaper and cheaper, therefore. Six power on the Agatha now. All right, and there is a Sylvanus Invoker. Can't make infinite mana with that, unfortunately. We'd need a land that taps for two mana. But we'll play it out here anyway, because we can spend green mana to do it, which means we don't waste our red mana, and I think we should have our opponent here. Actually overpaid for it, but plus two, plus two from the monument, and we see why that's relevant now. I suppose we could sacrifice the Steelbane Hydra so that I'm not wasting the green mana that I just floated. And now we can point the Flame Wave Invoker at our opponent. It only costs a single red, so we do get to see what we ultimately want to do in the deck. We should be able to do it a lot faster than this, but there we got there in the end, so... 5 damage multiple times to our opponent for a single red each time. And that is our opponent done. So hopefully you enjoyed the Agatha gameplay we got there in the end in showing off what we want to do in this deck. I'll probably play it again and try and actually show off the commander some. Been a bit of a rush this week trying to get gameplay so this is the best of a bad bunch. But like I said hopefully you all enjoyed it anyway. Massive thank you to the patrons for so consistently supporting me. I'm Travel Kai. Thank you for watching.